everyone, I'm Ashley and today I'm going to be doing my March wrap up. I'm going to try and make this quick because most of the books that I'm talking about in this video were part of the Femme Fantail Readathon which I have an entire vlog for so I will link that down below if you're interested but it does mean that I've mentioned most of these books already on this channel so I'm going to try and keep it quick and yeah. Most of my reading was done in the beginning of March because I took part in the Femme Fantail Readathon and then I fell into a reading slump, so yay! But I'm actually going to start with books that I read for university. The first one was a collection of poetry by... oh my god, I can't remember who the author is. But the collection is called Songs of Innocence and Experience and it's basically just like 18th century romantic period poetry. I'm not going to say much on it because as I've said many a time, I'm not really a fan of poetry, so I didn't think much of it. It's probably like... awesome. <laughs> I didn't really enjoy it. It wasn't bad, I just... I'm not a poetry person. I think I rated it about three stars and I do have to keep returning to it because it's part of my exam and things, so yeah. <laughs> Okay, I do have an Oscar on my lap now, so if you see a tail, that's why. I have also read quite a few other poems throughout the month of March, so we've had a lot of Wordsworth and Keats and like the typical romantic poets, but I haven't like reviewed them individually because there's a lot and I'm just not doing that. <laughs> As for books though, the only ones that I've actually read are for my children's literature module. So the first one is Noughts and Crosses by Mallory Blackman. This is a dystopia where the world is split into noughts and crosses. One side is like all white people and one side are black people. The black people are the more privileged side of the society so it really swaps around our society as we know it. And this has been dubbed kind of as a Romeo and Juliet retelling because it does follow two friends, one from each side and like all the problems that they come across and it later turns into like more than just friends but apparently Mallory Blackman has said that it wasn't intentionally a Romeo and Juliet retelling which really confuses me because there are a lot of scenes which are like exact replicas of Romeo and Juliet like the whole balcony scene is a thing and I just it baffles me that that apparently wasn't intentional so this is quite a cult classic when it comes to young adult dystopias and I hadn't read it before this so this is quite new to me. I think I'd have enjoyed it more if I was younger but that is kind of the point, I'm not the audience for this book. But I did find it quite entertaining and I liked how it constantly forces you to like check your assumptions because like I said it's the black people in this world who are the more privileged but just from the way we've been conditioned in our society it kind of like we assume that the main girl in this, who is the black woman, we assume that she's white because it's talking about her as if she is a white person in our society, but it flips that, so you're like always forced to check your assumptions. And it's kind of just making a point of that, like it's just showing how white is the norm in this world that we are, that we are in. So, And I just think that this book is a really good way to talk about things like race and class to a younger audience because it makes it like not our world but it does parallel it and it kind of just introduces those ideas that we might not have thought about before or we don't know how to approach when we're that young so yeah I just I think it's great in that respect. <laughs> I have to admit as well that I was so on board with this book particularly in the like representation of how the media can be so manipulative because that is something that infuriates me so much about the media. Like I've studied journalism and I purposely quit because I would have to write a certain way and just, it's a long story but yeah it's the manipulation of the media just it's one of those topics which like fuels my rage forever and it was a thing in this book like how headlines can really make a story seem completely different to what's actually written in the article but a lot of people don't get past the headline they just see the headline and react and I just I was so on board with that especially when it went to courtrooms and trials as well like just how things can be manipulated and made to sound a certain way because they're playing on your assumptions or just your prejudice that you might not even realize you have oh it was just so interesting. I didn't really like the ending though, the ending really let it down for me because it felt like it was building up slowly to something 
like big happening and something big does happen but I didn't like it. <laughs> there's kind of this weird section in the book where there's a pause and then you come back like a few years later and obviously all the characters are different people at this point. From there it just escalates so quickly and I was just like oh okay that happened and I just I don't know it just kind of didn't feel realistic from that point on. And it doesn't necessarily have to feel realistic because it's a dystopian book but like all the way through I kind of was on board with it and was intrigued to see what happened and then it did happen and I was like uh not for me. But yes it's one that I'm glad I read. I don't think I will be continuing the series just because while I enjoyed this one I'm not like motivated to carry on. I do know that there is a TV adaptation of this coming out though so I might just watch that. But yeah, I rated this one 4 out of 5 stars. So next up we have another one which was for my children's literature module and this is like the final one that I read for university this month and that is The Boy in the Striped Pyjamas by John Boyne. This is a story about the Holocaust and it's about a little boy who his entire family ends up like moving just outside of Auschwitz because his father is running Auschwitz I guess and so the little boy ends up making friends with someone who's on the other side of the fence and yeah you can imagine how sad this story is. This is a weird thing about reading this one as an adult because I wasn't necessarily sad because sad things happen. I mean obviously sad things do happen because it's the holocaust but like it was kind of that sadness where you realise the children don't know what's happening but you do and you're just kind of like oh wow okay and so it's written so that even small things like the word Auschwitz is written as out with because he can't pronounce it and it would be like small reminders like that that make you realize how young and uninvolved these kids should be but they are really involved because they're literally there and it's just oh I didn't find it as sad as I thought I would though, but I think that's because I didn't like the perspective, I guess. Because I have this thing, like, with children's books, I don't think I get along with them if they followed the child's perspective or were aligned with them that closely because I just get annoyed with how they talk. Because <laughs> obviously it's a little kid, so a lot of this book is, like, either really simplified and broken down a lot or it's just repeated a lot and it just gets really tedious for me and even though it's quite a short book I just too many things were repeated and I was like oh my god get on with it <laughs> please. I was not expecting the ending though like I did not expect it to end as it did. I had to go back and like read the last couple of pages to make sure that I'd read it right and was like oh my god. <laughs> so I can see why this book is so loved I don't think that's the right word it's like so praised I I don't know I can see why this book is important and I'm definitely going to be watching the film at some point it's been on like my Netflix list for a good two years now and I've been telling myself that I need to read the book first and now I've been forced to read the book so I can finally watch the film <laughs> I think I rated this one three out of five stars yeah it's uh, pretty average for me <laughs> So now we're moving on to the books that I read during the Femme Fantale readathon and I'm going to start with Cassandra by Krista Wolf. This is a Greek myth retelling of Cassandra who is a prophetess or an oracle. She's the daughter of King Priam and she has the gift of seeing into the future, having prophecies, but she's also cursed in a way that means no one believes what she says. So she's constantly trying to give people warnings throughout the Trojan world but she's just labelled as a madwoman. Now I knew that I would quite like this book because I find it really interesting how women used to be like deemed mad the second that they were anything apart from normal. Like female hysteria, <sighs> that topic just, it's so fascinating but so infuriating at the same time and I just, I love reading about it. And this is kind of one of those cases but not as much because it is from Cassandra's point of view and because it's from Cassandra's point of view it was quite disjointed to read and I found that I had to really get used to how it was written because it is quite slow going there's no like there's not a single chapter break in this book and while it is quite short it is quite slow going and it was just because I had to get used to how this book was written it was disjointed and while I wasn't quite sure about that at first 
I did eventually get on board with it because it felt like I was very much inside Cassandra's head because if she just keeps getting random prophecies but then has to debate about whether to tell people or to keep it to herself and she's like trying to keep up appearances while also having this like supernatural experience I kind of feel like you would be a bit disjointed like that is a lot to take on and I just feel like it was a really interesting perspective because since you're inside her head you also know the inevitable and you see her either fighting for a voice or choosing to stay silent and it's just she would analyze every situation and make the decision from that and it was just really really interesting because you can't imagine ever being in that situation like I don't think many people get prophecies it wasn't written in a way that wasn't accessible but I do think that quite a lot of people would find this hard to get along with so I don't know, maybe if you're considering reading this book then try and find a preview somewhere online or something. But I personally quite enjoyed it. I, you would definitely benefit from knowing the story beforehand because like I said it is a retelling. And I knew it vaguely but there were a lot of names that came up that I was like, oh, I'm not quite sure who you are but whatever. So yeah, I ended up rating this book 3.5 out of 5 stars. Next up we have Tangleweed and Brine by Deirdre Sullivan. This is a collection of short stories which are all retellings of fairy tales and this is just so deliciously dark. So these retellings focus on the heroines of the stories and it's just... All the stories are adapted in a way where you're not quite sure what you're going to get because sometimes it would take quite a while for you to recognise the story and then you'd have the kind of light bulb moment. Or sometimes you'd feel like you did know the story and it was following the originals quite closely but then it would like swap something around and you'd just be like oh this is suddenly a new story and I really really love that. I feel like a lot of fairy tale retellings kind of really closely follow the plot or just take one tiny thing out of it and they're just like aha retelling. This one was just it felt so unique and it like captured the fairy tale atmosphere so well because it was magical but also really quite dark and as well these fairy tales come with illustrations all in black and white and they're all quite strange. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it but they just seem really dark in themselves and they just pair up really well with the stories. The collection is split in half because there's like the first half which is Tangleweed and then the second half is Brown. I personally preferred the Tangleweed section but I think that is just because all of those stories are like tend to be set in woodland or forests whereas the Brine section is more of the fairy tales that you would associate with water so the Little Mermaid or the Frog Prince for example. And one thing that I really loved as well is that a lot of the female characters in this ended up being witches. So it felt like it brought in historical ties that I really loved and I just, oh, it was such a good collection of retellings. And I just read this so quickly. I ended up rating it four out of five stars. Next up we have How Long Till Black Future Month by N.K. Jemisin. This again is a collection of short stories. They're all fantasy or sci-fi short stories but they're kind of very much tied with our world or like the social issues in our world. A lot of them take on the issue of race and it's just, again, I found this really interesting. So I did have quite a slow start with this book and I think that's just because I was getting used to N.K. Jemisin's writing but it takes longer when they're short stories because the story like flips constantly and different stories might take on different atmospheres and it's quite hard to adjust but then once I did I really enjoyed these. They were the kind of stories which are kind of uncomfortable to read about because you know that all of the social issues that they're talking about are relevant in our world but this was set in a fantasy world which was so close to ours but it was like just like distanced enough for you to be able to accept the idea of a utopia or accept that there are monsters in this world but it would also feel really close to ours so it's just like it purposely made you feel uncomfortable and I kind of really liked that because it's one of those things where in order for you to acknowledge the things that are so normal in our world you need to like defamiliarize them completely and that's what this story did. I feel like I don't have much more to say on this one because obviously I didn't like all of the stories because it's very hard to get that within a short story collection but I did enjoy the majority of them and I just I feel like this was a really good way for me to introduce myself to N.K. Jemisin's writing. I really want to read her first season series but decided to pick up this one first because this is kind of like a one hit thing. It's just a standalone. I could read this one and be done with it for now. 
But I am definitely going to return to N.K. Jemisin as an author and I really want to read the, the fifth season at some point, so yeah. I ended up rating this one 4 out of 5 stars. And the final book that I'm going to mention in this video is The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Auden. This is a fantasy story which is inspired by Russian folklore and it follows a family whose kind of like nanny of the family is known for telling stories. But the main character in this Farsia can actually see the creatures from the stories and knows that it's not all fake. As I keep saying about this book, it is quite slow moving until you get to the very end and then it's like everything goes down. It's really, really good. Like, it's such a good ending, but yeah. It is quite a slow moving book and I can understand why it's not for everybody, but I really don't mind slow moving books and especially as well, just like with Tangleweed and Brine, this captured the kind of folk tale or fairy tale atmosphere so well. It was magical but dark and I just really love it when stories have this thing where fairy tale creatures are real and someone doesn't quite know whether they're all right with that or not, like they're really unsure about whether they can trust the creature or not and just, I don't know, I just really like fairy tales coming to life apparently and things being magical. <laughs> but you do also see like more characters and more problems than just like the magical fairy tale element and it's just there's so many things in it that I'm interested in and like every branch of plot intrigued me massively and I just I got so caught up in the story I did read this via audiobook but like I read along with it so I'll read and listen at the same time and when it got to the end oh my god <laughs> I ended up crying at the end of this book but probably not where you would expect me to cry like if you've read this book then if I said that I cry, you would probably think of one specific moment at the end, but it's not that moment. I didn't cry at that. I cried at something after that. But yeah, I just got so enthralled and engaged in this book that I couldn't imagine anything like outside the story. I was fully involved with it and I just, oh, it was so good. <laughs> I've already started reading the second book, which doesn't happen with me. Like if you know me at all, it takes me a very long time to actually continue a series, so. It's that good, guys. <sighs> I ended up writing this book 4.5 out of 5 stars. <laughs> so yeah, those are all the books that I read in March. They were all pretty much in the beginning of March. I haven't read much since <laughs> because I did fall into a reading slump, but I think I'm pulling back out of it now. But anyway, let me know if you've read any of these books and what your thoughts on them were if you have. And yeah, I shall see you next time with a new video. Bye.